Hey everybody, it's Rob Nelson here with Rob and Jonas's Filming Tips, and I'm gonna take today this photo, and I'm gonna turn it into this photo. And I do all of that through a very simple workflow. Today I'm gonna talk about how I use Lightroom to do astrophotography, and particularly how to pull out the Milky Way out of an image. Now this all started when Jonas and I decided we wanted to ask you all for different photos. Favorite raw photo. So before I get into the astrophotography bit, I just want to show you a couple of the images that I got, kind of show you how I quickly worked them up, because I was really only picking one, but I got so many cool ones. Um, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the raw folder here and then show you how I did it. So back burner here, shot this one in Washington DC and I took it and you can pull a lot out of it. I added some solar flares, just made it a little warmer. David Mickick shot this one and I kind of just reframed the shot, did something like this, didn't do a whole lot to it. I really liked this shot, Rob Nelson sent this one to me, another Rob Nelson, believe it or not. And you can take it and just pull out the Milky Way just like that, which is so cool. And I'm going to show you another one of his photos later on. This was a photo shot in Budapest. I just pulled a little bit out of it because if you shoot raw, you can do a lot to it. Oh, and I quite like this shot by Shannon Hill. I basically just reframed it, added a little bit of color, and really like the way that one looks with the old airplane seats. Feels like 1985 Berlin to me. And this one was shot in Southeast Asia by Jesse. I went ahead and I recropped it and turned it into that. Although this is the one Jonas is going to be working on, so um, I'll let him manipulate that one a little bit further. But I didn't spend enough time on these shots, but that's because I'm spending time on this particular one. Now, it does not look like a whole lot from here, and this is partly why I wanted to show you guys my workflow, because, of course, I'm going to be making it look like this, which I think is really cool. So let me show you how I do all this. First of all, I open up Adobe Lightroom, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over here to the library function, and I'm going to select my photo, night shot right here, I just renamed it. I'm going to drag that in, and then you go in down here and say import. Now part of the reason I want to show you guys this is just show you my workflow, kind of show you how I manipulate photos. Okay, so here's Lightroom. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go over to the develop tab. From the develop tab, you have a whole bunch of things that you can manipulate right here. So let's just start with that. First of all, it's super dark. So I'm going to up the exposure so that we can start to see that Milky Way. Now you don't want to go too crazy because you want to be able to get a little contrast, you know, in the Milky Way still. So what I'm going to do, let's see, take the blacks down just a little bit, maybe the whites up. I'm trying to make this pop just a little bit, a little bit of contrast here. Um, now what you're seeing it's happening is the Milky Way here is popping quite a lot, which is really nice. But the people here are starting to get dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a gradient right here. So you click on that button and then you just drag it. Let's just drag it a little bit here. Now there's a few presets that I need to manipulate here. One of which is, you can't probably tell right now, so if you zoom in on YouTube, you can see there's a lot of grain right down here. So one of the things I need to do is I need to make sure that my sharpness is actually not turned high. Because you see what happens when you add sharpness? It can look cool when it's a small thumbnail, but not when it's blown up. So we just drag that all the way to the end. Maybe not too bad. But um, dehazing here is just going to add some sharpness. Let's zoom back out. Um, but we also want to not make the clarity too much. We want to keep it fairly soft because it is a night photo. If not, it'll get grainy. The other thing though that I'm going to do is, I think I, because it's a night photo, I want it to be totally blue. I mean, it's a night sky, so I'm going to take the temperature of this gradient down just a little bit, but actually maybe add a little bit of green because I need a little bit of color in this shot. Okay, then I'm going to add another gradient. And this one's like a circle gradient. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it right over the Milky Way, something like that. Now, obviously what it did is that it went the wrong way. <laughs> and so uh, I need to invert that mask just so it's on the inside. And so you can see as I brighten it up, it brightens. And I think what I want to do is I want to make the Milky Way bit pretty purple. Because I think that looks cool, but I'm going to feather these edges quite a bit. Um, so, not too much, just a little bit there. Okay, ooh, I like that, I like that a lot. 
Now, one trick that I want you guys to think about when you're working with photos is really think about where you're going to deliver it. First of all, if you're going to make a huge print, you need to be really aware of your grain, um, of the amount of noise that's in your photo. But if you're just making a little tiny thumbnail for a YouTube video, then you need to look at your photo in thumbnail view. So I need to make it really, 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 really tiny like that. So I'm just looking at it like that and you want it to pop and, and you're not, maybe not so worried about the grain. So for instance, I could take this because it, if it was going to be really tiny, maybe I take this gradient here and I add a little color to the whole photo. I don't know. So that maybe when it's in the thumbnail view, it has a little bit more color, which is kind of cool. If you're just looking at it from a thumbnail, I think that makes it pop quite a bit more. But again, if you're large, it looks a, a little bit ridiculous to have that much color. Okay, so this, this photo I think works pretty good as is, but the nice thing is I can also crop it because I think I want those people perfectly in the middle. So something like that would work. And then maybe I bring it in just a little bit. Now what this does, of course, is, you know, as far as the rule of thirds go, here these people are down here on the lower third line. These are PowerPoints right here, and they're looking up, it's drawing your eye up to that Milky Way. So I quite like how that looks. We need to bring it in just a little bit there as well. Um, okay, now, uh, a few other things that you can do while you're in Lightroom is uh, a lot of people like to add a vignette here, so you can do something like that. Now, I would say be very careful with your vignettes because you can add it, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves seeing people put vignettes on everything. Honestly, I've done a lot of it myself too, but just be careful with it. You don't want it to look like it has a vignette, so maybe just something real subtle like that would work okay. I think this right now, as it is, is looking pretty good. Let me show you a few other things that I usually look at when I go into the photo just to see. Um, first thing is, I um, and maybe not so much with the, these photos, but I'll go in and I'll choose uh, a couple of different ways to tone the highlights and the shadows and just kind of see how it looks. Usually I'm going back and forth between this gray one and this kind of pinkish one. And you know, a lot of this is choice. I kind of like that warmer look, so I think I'm gonna go with that right at the moment. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna go down here to, where is it? Um, oh, dehaze. Okay, dehazing, for the shots that I do, I oftentimes want them really kind of sharp. And so if you, so there's like haziness in the sky, and the more you slide that, the more it's going to dehaze it. But you gotta be careful, because you don't want it to get too grainy. I think it's getting a little bit grainy. So that's all I'm gonna to do to this photo. As you can see, it did not take very long. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to File, Export, and then because I put everything in a Robin Jonas's Dropbox folder, it's already chosen. I'm gonna keep the same file, except I'm gonna start it at four so I know which one it is. Keep everything pretty much standard on here. I don't need to resize it. I'm just exporting it for my own web purposes. I'm going to send it out, and here it's going to export right there. It'll be done in a second. And that's all there is to my workflow. Now, to be totally honest with you, I really like manipulating photos mostly in Photoshop. I showed you this Lightroom workflow just because I do a lot of it when I do time-lapse photos. So if you want to see my time-lapse uh, series, put the link in the description down below. Also, Jonas took all of these photos himself and worked up one of them. So I'm going to leave that video link at the end. We will see you next Tuesday for more tips and tricks on filmmaking, photography. Subscribe if you have not done it already because not only are we teaching you the technical details of how to be a filmmaker, but we are showing you what you need to do to think like a filmmaker, make a living like a filmmaker. That's what we do all the time. Hopefully we can share that with you. We'll see you next week.